you made it to level two, deeper questions leading to deeper answers. I'm Tomas Garza, and I'm here to help you decide to transform. I'll be setting the pace for the process to support your unfolding. Learn and commit to a practice that brings simplicity and then awareness of what is ready to be released. Join me now and allow the experience of a deeper sense of love. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Decide to Transform. This is a fun episode, and I don't know exactly what's going to happen, and I have to be perfectly honest with you, I love that. Now, joining me as my very special guest today from Toronto is Carm Viola. And again, as I said, this is going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be some laughter and some high speed and high energy for you today. So that much we can say for sure. But Carm is a sought out registered psychotherapist and registered early childhood educator from Toronto, who's been working in children's mental health for over 30 years. Now, she is also a mental health advocate who's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars in Ontario for children's programming and has been featured in a number of magazines and podcasts. I've had the pleasure of chatting with her ahead of time, and that's how I can say that this is going to be a high energy and a lot of fun kind of conversation. So Carm, welcome to Decide to Transform. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you, Tomas. This is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, you know what, one of the things that that we were talking about just a couple of minutes ago, I want to lead with this because you've been doing for decades, some very, very serious and very important mental health work and mental health advocacy. There's going to be a lot of space on the program to talk about that. But you have begun a, well, is it a... um, an organization or a, a movement called Heart Fuelers. Would you tell us a little bit about Heart Fuelers and what that is? Sure. I actually hope it becomes a movement. It really started um, during COVID. And because people were so down, people were um, you know, not feeling themselves. I started to think about how can we bring some life, laughter, share love with people. Um, So this idea started to brew and it's the more we kind of pondered on it, things started to actually happen where my sister came over one day and we have two friends who are battling cancer Mm. while going, while during COVID, sorry. And we thought, what's one way we can cheer them up? What's one way we can make them smile? My husband was making lasagnas that day. Yes, my husband cooks. I'm so grateful for that. (laughs) There you go. Lasagna. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And so he said, you know what? Since I'm making lasagnas, I'm going to make one for our two friends. So my sister was over at that time. And I said, oh, my goodness, let's take these lasagnas and bring it to them and use it as a as a moment of kindness, moment of spreading love Mm -hmm. so then it started to then heart fuelers started to become more defined so there's three parts to heart fuelers so one part is we have t-shirts and we've we've created a logo so through the sales of the t-shirts the t-shirts are twenty dollars through the sales of the t-shirt that money 90 percent of them that those funds will go to children's charities in toronto or or surrounding areas um, or a children's service. Okay. Then the other piece of it is acknowledging and recognizing people in the community who make a difference. That's the okay. other piece. Yes. And then the other piece are these visits. So we go and visit people who just need cheering up or people who we want to recognize and we bring them. We've got all these vendors now that are coming on board. We have florists on board. We have people who make these desserts like cake pops and smash cakes. Um, so we've got all these different kinds of people who want to be and participate with us mm-hmm. um, to show just love and kindness to each other. There's okay. so much negativity going on in the world. We just oh, yeah. want to show love and spread love. That's, mm-hmm. that's what Heart Feelers is. 
That's it. Okay. Well, so now, how was this idea born? Um, it, this is this is relatively recent. It, it's all COVID era. So most of the listeners, uh, if you're listening to this six, seven years from now, thank you uh, for, for going back. Um, we're right in the middle still of the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, how was this idea of heart fuelers born then? Well, it's actually a funny story. Mm -hmm. it, it all started about two years ago, I, I had surprised a friend on vacation and her reaction fueled me and just gave me such energy and such happiness. I was like, this is incredible. I got to find a job where I surprise people. Okay. How can I oh. make this happen? How can I make this happen? And so it's been sort of brewing that long, but then just recently in COVID time, it all kind of came together. This is how we can make a difference in people's lives. This is how we can make people happy, right? So okay. we we recently visited a 92, nine, actually, sorry, 97 year old man whose wife is in long-term care and has dementia. So he's missing her, he can't connect with her. So we went and surprised him. And it was beautiful. Like that's really how it started. Okay, I love it. So when you go and you surprise people, uh, do you do you spend some time with them, or what does this all look so like? So every so every every person so people can nominate people. Oh, okay, fun. So yeah, so of course they have to live in we're <laughs> in Toronto or or the surrounding areas. <laughs> all right. I wish we could travel. Maybe that'll <laughs> come in future in, in the future. Oh, you um, know it. It will. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. We were we were talking about when you go and and you visit somebody, oh, yes. whether however they've been nominated, yeah. what you all do with them. So what we do is we bring them a gift. So it's either flowers or chocolate, or we get to know that if we know that person, we know what they like, or if the person has nominated them, we have a conversation with them. So we spend, and we're all outside, it's not indoors, it's all outside. And yes, it's cold here in, in Toronto. So we're wearing <laughs> our parkas and we're, we're covered uh -huh. and our masks. Um, <laughs> so we, yeah. So we spend about 15 minutes to half an hour outside with, with people and we do various things. So for this, for this older gentleman, he likes the harmonica. My mother, <laughs> luckily enough, plays the harmonica. So we called, I called my mother and I said, you know, would you mind coming and playing the harmonica for this man, for this man? She was absolutely, I'm coming. So we really decide based on the individual and who that person is. Okay. All right. And how many people uh, do you visit one person a week or how many people do you all visit in this program? We try to do two every weekend. Okay. Try to do two every weekend. So and we don't post them all, but we've posted okay. a few. We have an Instagram account called, it's at Heart Fuelers. All right. Yeah, perfect. Well, this is going to be one of my questions is how can people find out more information about this? And there'll be more opportunities during the show to, to talk about it. So it's at Heart Fuelers on Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. That's, okay. yeah. I love it. Well, now this plays into a lot of what we're going to be talking about today because we are in the midst of a pandemic where that has been such a, a wide reaching event in, in almost everyone's life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you are a mental health professional going back several decades. And, uh, you know, what, um, what are you seeing as being um, some of the, the main challenges over this past year? I think there's really been a heightened sense of loss. Okay. Right? Grief, loss of connecting with friends, loss of jobs, uh, anxiety has increased, depression, suicide. Mm -hmm. So a lot of significant mental health issues have just exploded. Okay. It felt more manageable prior to COVID in terms of work. Mm -hmm. But now it just seems like you just can't keep up and wait lists are increasing for service. 
which is which is terrible because you want to support people as quickly as possible. Mm. Yeah, I I was wondering how the system is is coping with it because this is something that I I, don't, I think that a lot of people don't even think about or, or, or mm-hmm. talk about. Now, and some of the listeners may have familiarity with the mental health system in their area. Uh, many don't. So, are you all completely overwhelmed right now? Is that the situation? I, I think so. I would say so. Absolutely. There's just there's so many people in need that it's just combusting. I would say combusting. Mm. I know that sounds, it sounds like such an intense word, but I feel, and it could, it's probably how I'm feeling too, not being able to, you know, support the people that need to be supported. You know, hot, there's hotlines. I mean, there's definitely help. Um, It's just waiting. Right. You know, I mean, you can always access the doctor. Your doctor is the first person, you know, that you could go to, to, to get some help. But there's lots of online um, support in terms of like information. Um, I know a lot of people are doing online visits or sessions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, uh, you know, that does strike me as as one thing that that's very good is that we have technology like Zoom uh, to be able to, well, at least virtually connect with each other. But uh, that's one of the issues that 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 you mentioned a minute ago is is a loss, a, a sense of loss of a lot of things, but connection being one of them, um, would you say some more about how you've seen that play out over the last year, like loss of connection? Mm-hmm. I think for kids who are in virtual school, like that's the first thing that I kind of think of just because I'm working with children, mm-hmm. you know, there's so many things that happen when you go to school early and you're able to play in the playground, you know, and, and then you get into, into class and you're doing group work those kids who are doing virtual learning, they're losing the dynamics of creating those friendships, right? And with teens too, this is for teens, this is when, you know, you're finding out who am I, you know, you're getting your sense of autonomy and you're going out and you're, you're, you might be going skateboarding with friends, or you might be, you know, doing different various activities in the city. And that's not happening. Right. And, and even for adults, right. Just gathering at a friend's house for dinner. You're, you're not, you're not sort of maintaining those friendships in the way that we used to. There's a lot of things that happen when you're face to face, right. Even just touch. When, when I think of just a hug, hugging people, we're not, we're not able to hug anybody, your parents. Like I think of the uh, elderly people who are missing their children, their grandchildren, it's, it's pretty profound. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. And I think that when all of this began a year ago, it seems like none of us knew. We didn't have any experience with this in our lifetimes. So there was really no way of knowing. And now eventually this is going to come to an end. Um, do you see some of the same challenges persisting after all of this is over, after lockdowns are over. What, what's this going to look like, do you think? I know it's 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 probably hard to say, but I could I would imagine that the lingering effects of sort of what we're going through right now, you know, almost like a PTSD, like this, mm. people are traumatized by this. And how are they going to manage in the world? You know, is their anxiety going to be increased? Are they going to be able to just walk out the door freely, maybe with no mask? Or are they going to be thinking, oh, what if that person's sick? I, 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 it makes me think of things, activities that we used to do and not think about. Like, for example, bowling. You know, you put your fingers in the, mm-hmm. in the bowling ball, not thinking twice. Oh, is it clean? Is it not clean? You know, or going to, um, I think about going to buffets. And everybody's right. It's like, oh, to think about it. It's like, oh, I, I don't think I'll ever do that again. 
Yeah, the heightened awareness. Right. There's certain things um, like holding handrails when you go up the stairs yeah. that yeah. I don't think we'll ever th think of quite the same again. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, you know, the the lockdowns and shutdowns have played a, a large role, and every jurisdiction has different applications of that. But, you know, it's got to be very interesting from your standpoint as a mental health professional. Um, you know, none of us can see when the end of this will actually be, but do you have a sense of, of that? How are you seeing all of that going? Oh, gosh. I, I mean, I'm always hopeful. I, I'm very, I, I you know, very into my faith and pray that there will be an end in sight and that people will become more respectful of each other. And just because they've been so isolated that my hope is that people will just be more loving towards one another. There'll be more compassion. There'll be more understanding um, all around. You know, because yeah. I think right now there's such a, there's such a divide, vaccine, no vaccine. You know, wear your mask, don't wear your mask. Right. I, I think we're so divided and I hope that through this somehow we become unified in some way. I know we all have different opinions and we all have different thoughts and that's what makes the world go around and that's what makes us all so unique. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, I really hang on to my faith okay. around the hope for change <clears throat> that it becomes better. Okay. Now, would you say that that your faith is is the number one um, coping mechanism or um, activity that has helped? It you? is. It is definitely one. I pray a lot. Yes, it is definitely a coping strategy for me. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of mindfulness, um, just being and sitting and breathing. I I call my friends. You know, even as a therapist, we have. You know, we get stressed too. Yeah. <laughs> and having to, you know, maintain and manage, you know, support families can also feel, for me, overwhelming at some points during mm -hmm. COVID, right? Yeah. It's, it's yes. been very different. It's been a very different kind of path. Yeah, I can imagine. And I, I just had a, a wonderful conversation with a woman earlier this week who um, raised a really interesting point. I'd love to hear your, your take on this and your experience is that when, when someone is in a, a profession such as yours in mental health, and that is a helping profession, sometimes the helping professional needs to be supported as well. And that is something that's often overlooked. So um, would you say a little bit more about your experience uh, needing support to help support others day to day? Absolutely. I mean, I'm very fortunate that I have, I work in a children's mental health agency as well as have a private practice. And I'm so fortunate to work with such caring, compassionate, kind, loving um, team who are there at the drop of a hat. So if I'm feeling down or if I'm feeling stuck in helping a family, I can turn to them. And that is my, that is my go-to. Okay. That is my go-to, mm -hmm. to going to my colleagues who, who are my friends. And then, you know, I try to laugh a lot. I try to watch funny movies. Um, I meditate, mm -hmm. pray, you know, you, you, as a therapist, you do need to take care of your own mental health. Oh, yeah. Because then you can't be available to the families you work with, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think it's very important. I, I also joined a musical theater class. You know, I love to sing and dance. So okay. I'm like, okay, let's try this. Let's try something new. Um, oh, all right. So I did that. So that's how I take care of my, my mental yeah. health, which I think okay. is so important. Right. It, it is. And, you know, I'm glad that you mentioned that because there's so many people that that don't know how important that really, yeah. truly is. And you know what, Tomas, it's it's really important because I think this is where the stigma comes to surface, where people are afraid mm -hmm. to seek that support, because yeah. even in 2021, people still think I can't access service. What if what if people think? You know, what if people think I'm crazy? What if people, you know, what are they going to think of me? And it's so 
not the case. Well, I shouldn't say still not the case. Everybody has different opinions mm -hmm. about that, but I feel like there's been mental health has come, you know, is, is really rising in such a different way in a, in a, you know, in a different light mm -hmm. where people are feeling, yeah, it's okay. But there's still that, I know, I don't know if this is making sense, but there's still that stigma, but oh, yeah. yet it's moving forward. I feel like it's moving forward. Yes. And, uh, you know, I can relate to that. There's, a, there's a, I've spoken with, with a number of, of people that are involved in, in mental health or helping professions. And what seems clear to me is that the conversation is changing relative yes. to where it was a couple of decades ago. Yeah. And we've moved away from that institutionalizing kind of, you know, um, idea where, mm -hmm. you know, it's more accessible. Mental health services are more accessible because they're in the community, right? Whereas yeah. before it was like, okay, you're going to go to this institution and, you know, you're going to just stay there for a few months or whatever it is to get better. And then you can come back out into the world. Whereas now it's you're living in the community where you can access the service, right? Yeah. And there's so, there's so many people that can support and, and here, I'm not sure where you, where you live, but there are services everywhere, mm -hmm. right? There are, and, and I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and there are, are services here being a, a large city. There are services available everywhere. I mean, what I've seen um, and uh, experienced is that there's more of a conversation. So the stigma still exists. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, 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 that hasn't yeah. gone away, but it's something that we've made um, talk aboutable. That's a word that I like, talk aboutable. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. So true, because it debunks all these sort of mysteries of what is this, you know? It, you know, when people, you know, it might become complicated if somebody says, oh, I have a diagnosis of schizophrenia. And right away, because it's on you're not familiar with it right away, your, your anxiety increases, like what is that? And, but if we talk about it and become understanding and know that there's help and people do get better, mm -hmm. people can live and function in the world. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they can. And, uh, you know, one, one of the things that, um, that we, we definitely want to say here on the program is um, it is okay to reach out. Yeah. And it's out. okay to not be okay, Tomas. It's okay, mm -hmm. right? And just access those people that you know, your doctor, a friend, a neighbor, you know, a rabbi, a priest, whoever is in your circle. Um, you know, all people need is one person. Yeah. You just need one person to say, I think I need some help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You just need one person. Now, um, has it been any different for you working with uh, families and, and, and kids? Um, yeah. Would you say some more about what that's been like during the past year? Well, it's changed tremendously because it's virtual. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and again, as a therapist and working with young kids, I use a lot of my body. So what I mean is the way I position myself, whether I'm really close to the child, whether I touch the child's hand or whether we're doing an art activity, you know, the proximity makes a difference in how somebody opens up. So imagine you and I are in front of each other, but I'm standing 10 feet away from you and I'm asking you, well, how are you doing today? Like, did you have any rough moments? And you're going to be like, can she even hear me? But it, 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 right. So when you're close to somebody, there's, there's a secure, there's a, not to say that all kids feel safe in the close proximity, but it's just an example that I'm using. Mm -hmm. um, whereas virtually if a child's crying, I can't hug them. Um, you know, and you're, you're really dependent on the parent to be present to provide a lot of that. And when you're working with young kids, you do use the parents. You, you're, you're teaching the parents a lot of how to support and guide the child who's in distress. Okay. 
Yeah, and I just think it would be really difficult not having the uh, ability to physically touch the way yeah. that we did pre-COVID. Yeah, you know what? It makes me think about a few, way back early on in my career, we had a um, we had a psychologist, a director, um, and a social worker from the Ukraine. Was mm. it the Ukraine? I think it was the Ukraine. Come. To the center where I work at, they wanted to better understand how we were working with young young children. Um, it was a they wanted to implement a prevention program, and so when they came, they described it, they were they worked in an orphanage. So, so you're, we're talking like 1980. Okay. 1980s. Um, <laughs> no. I'm old. I'm old. People. I'm old. Um, <laughs> So they talked about how their physical space looked. So if you can imagine, let's just, you know, imagine a 20 by 20 room and wall to wall cribs and the way they were, because they were short staffed as well, the way that some of the orphanages were tending to these children was mechanical. Okay. You have a bottle, you have a bottle, you have a bottle. Okay. Diaper change, diaper change, diaper change. Yeah. There was no touching no cuddling could you imagine a baby who's crying and you can't pick them up because there's 20 other babies in this room and only three staff no oh, yeah. babies so these babies were dying hmm. oh, these babies were just because touch is so important to humankind to human to humankind that that these children weren't getting that need met and it, it just makes me think of now. It makes me think of, you know, we're not allowed to touch people, um, you know, because of fear of getting sick and what, what that's doing to our being, to our souls, to our mind. Yeah. Sad. Yeah, it's not a, a, a long-term, a, a pretty picture so, uh, you know, and what, and what in your experience and in, in your opinion would need to happen for us to, to get out of the spiral that appears to be going on here? Well, I think people need to find joy in their lives. Okay. I think mm -hmm. that people need to, even if it's a small thing, you know, even if it's, oh, the sun came out today, you know, just being grateful for those small little things even just physically how you stand can help you change the way you feel. So yeah. if I'm hunched over and I've got a frown, you know, that's going to, right? That's going to impact your day. It's going to carry you through the day. But even if you just, you know, put your shoulders back, half a smile, call someone, um, you know, even go for a walk, just have those connections in the ways that we're able to have those connections today. I mean, yes. What do I think needs to happen? COVID needs to go away. That's what yeah. needs to happen. Yeah, <laughs> like yesterday. That'd be good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think people are getting tired of it. So with the warmer weather coming, well, here, with the warmer weather coming here, uh -huh. hopefully, I'm you know, here too. We can, <laughs> yeah. And oh, people, yeah. I always think of, of Arizona as always being warm and hot. Oh. Well, there's, there's a difference between 20 degrees Celsius and 47, which we had last summer. So oh my gosh, I love that's, that. That's coming. 45 <laughs> and up. The shorts, yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's go for, to the beach at 20. For, for those of you here in the States, you may be familiar with the hot valley, the Phoenix Valley, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. I love the heat. I Coming was born soon. in the wrong country. <laughs> <laughs> my, my parents are Italian, so I always say to them, what made you come here? Why did you go so warm? Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, what did they say? Um, uh, they just said this is where the opportunity was. So we came uh, here. So, yeah. you know, yeah. they went to New York first, that whole, oh. I'm first generation Canadian. So. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Well, New York is, uh, it can't be that much warmer than, than no, Toronto. No, it's not. It's not. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. But they could have gone south. They could have gone to Florida. Mm -hmm. they could have gone to California. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very true. Very true. But yeah, yeah I mean, you, you make a good point with the warmer weather um, coming up, then people are going to be extremely tempted to want to gather. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. And, and I think they should <laughs> mm -hmm. safely, safely, of course. Right. Well, and, and there's several, uh, several states in the US and, and I don't know about Canadian provinces, but um, there's several places here in the US where the majority of people agree with you on that. Get out, have some fun. Now, I'm looking forward to a street party with taco trucks. So, oh, that's great. Yeah, that, that's going to happen fun. at some point. Now, and you've mentioned a couple of times here during the show about finding joy and, and cultivating joy. Now, it's my understanding that you've been interested in singing and have written <laughs> songs, right? I have, I have. All right. So again, it it all it all transpired during COVID, mm -hmm. and again, it was just my need to make people smile or yeah. have some fun during this really difficult time. So yes, I wrote seventeen COVID songs. All they're right. very short. Um, they're um, funny. I dress up in, 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 and you can see I've posted them on Instagram, on my Instagram. Oh, okay. On right. uh, my Instagram page. Um, and they are, yeah, they're just silly and people. So I, I did the first one and the first one was just supposed to be the first one and that was it. And then I got all this great feedback. And of course, of okay. course, there's my phone. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No worries. Um, so it motivated me to do more because people were saying, oh my gosh, this is great. This is so funny. This is giving me joy. This is making me laugh. Yeah. Uh, so I, it motivated me to continue. And I do, the, I do spoofs on songs. So like I did one to Greece, um, the Greece <laughs> song. I did one, a Michael Jackson. Um, uh -huh. And again, they're all COVID related. All right. And, and there are videos available to, to be seen. There are videos on, yeah. Mm, yeah, there okay. are videos on my Instagram at Carm Viola. All right, this is uh, this is very very good. So there is at Carm Viola on your Instagram, so people can see. And now there's 17. Now, which of these, uh, which of these has gotten the most attention? Oh, if you gosh. know, yeah. let uh, let me see. Yeah. I think. The JLo one has a thousand five hundred. No, oh, wow. Okay. Let me see. Uh, let me just check here. Uh, yeah, that seems to be a thousand five hundred. The Michael. Uh, let me see the Michael Jackson one. Oh, the Bee Gees has a thousand five hundred thirty-seven. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Who doesn't love the Bee Gees? I know. You gotta yeah. love the Bee. You, yes, you got to. Mm -hmm. Oh, my first one actually was 1,697, so. Okay. <laughs> anyway. I love anyway. It. Yeah. So uh, they've, they've been, when you can see these, at Carm Viola on Instagram. Uh, we'll, we'll say all of that again, and we'll, we'll have uh, everybody with an opportunity to jot down all of your social handles here uh, as we go along. But um, this is really important. We're making an important point here about the cultivation of, of joy. And this is clearly one of the ways that you've coped with the heavy duty demands of the pandemic. Definitely, definitely. I'm watching a lot of Netflix. Ah, yeah. All right. So <laughs> I think listeners are curious, speaking of Netflix, what are you currently binge watching on Netflix? Ginny, what's it called? Ginny and Georgia? Yes. Ginny, Georgia, I watched that. Uh -huh. um, I watched, um, oh my gosh, what haven't I watched? That one has been a little bit tough for me actually to get through because there's a lot of heavy mental health stuff. And I just needed a bit of a break. So I watched the first three episodes and then I, I had to kind of stop a little bit. Um, but Emily in Paris, love it. Oh. I, it makes me want to jump into the TV and just pretend I'm in Paris. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I would like to be in Paris myself. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. I actually like watching documentaries too. There's one called mm. Heal, H-E-A-L. Oh, okay. And it's, it's all about, have you seen it, Tomas? I have not. So heal is about how the body can actually manifest its own healing. Oh, okay. So the story that strikes me in this is there's a gentleman 
from California who was cycling and was hit by a transport truck and broke his vertebrae in five spots. Mm -hmm. So in his process of getting, going to the doctors, they said, we're going to need to put, you know, rods in your spine. And he said, I am not doing that. No way. He then was on a journey to heal himself and he did it. He healed his spine. It blows my mind how incredible our bodies are. And joy and happiness has a lot to do with healing yourself. Mm -hmm. And whatever little piece you can find, you know, I would urge you to do it. And our brains, our brains are so there's, there's, I'm, I'm getting a little bit off topic. There's a neuropsychiatrist by the name of Dan Siegel and um, a psychologist named Tina Payne Bryson, who wrote a book called The Whole Brain Child. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the books that I recommend to parents. Okay. And there's a piece in here that I read to parents all the time. If I could just read it to you. Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. It says, uh, over time, the connections that result from firing lead to rewiring in the brain. This is incredibly exciting news. It means that we aren't held captive for the rest of our lives by the way our brains work at this moment. We can actually rewire it so that we can be healthier and happier. This is not only true for children and adolescents, but also for each of us across the lifespan. That little, that paragraph there, that sentence resonates so much with me because Mm -hmm. it's about healing. It's about, it doesn't matter where you are in your life right now. Like if you think of an addict or if you think of somebody who who can't stop smoking or, you know, there is you can you can get there. You it's it's all in the support that you need to get to that place um, and how you find that joy in the every day. For me, it's about every day just finding one or two little things, because that one or two little things tomorrow will be three things. And next week, it might be four, you know, and I'm not saying that everybody's going to be happy all the time. You're not going to be happy all the time. That's the reality. But really trying not to get stuck in that place of sadness. um, And knowing what, what helps you, because everything we're all different. So what helps you is not like Tomas, how do you, I'm interviewing you now. What helps oh, this you? Is, this is absolutely you, okay. <laughs> what helps you when you're feeling down? Sure. Yes. You know, what do you do? Well, what I do, and this is not the first time that I've been interviewed on my own show. <laughs> Listeners out there, I like this. It's fun. So I appreciate the question. Um, so what I do are a number of things. I mean, I've had a meditation practice myself for about 35 years, maybe more than that. And one thing I always say, and Carmen, this is just to uh, to come back to a point that you just made, is that uh, you know, it's little things. And if all we're capable of is one moment of joy, that's better than no moments of joy. And like you said, tomorrow, it could be two, then three, then four. And with meditation, one breath, actually, if you pay attention to one single inhale and exhale breath, that is, in fact, a successful meditation. And I have a physical exercise. Uh, Gyms are open where I live, which is really nice. And uh, we have hikes and walks and and sunshine. And and when it's 40 degrees and above here, Celsius, um, that is is pool weather so there will be the swimming pool and wherever people are there's always something that can be done and and you know your point of small steps is really a good one yeah yeah just a teeny tiny step and there's so much research about laughter ah Um, yes you know just about how what in our brain, the chemicals that are released in our brains that bring that euphoria, right? That bring you to that place. And even if it's a fake laugh, even if it's just like, ha, 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 you know, it's just, you know, it. even if it's a fake yeah. laugh, mm-hmm. you know, and crying, crying after, if you think about how you feel after you cry, you feel better, you feel relaxed. 
So have a good cry, mm-hmm. you know, but then follow it up with have a good laugh. Watch yes. baby videos, watch animal videos. If you ever, if you just Google dog videos, funny dog videos or funny cat videos or birds, you know, there are tons, tons. So I want to thank all those people who put all those videos out there. Um, yeah. 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 I, I did too, because it's a lot of fun. And uh, then, of course, there are, are all sorts of, of YouTube accounts and, and Instagram accounts of, of people that are having a lot of fun. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I completely agree. Yeah. I also don't want to minimize the struggle. You know, I'm not trying to minimize because the struggle is real. Mm-hmm. The struggle is very hard. Um, but pushing through, like you, we were saying before, one step at a time. And if it's just calling that friend or calling your doctor or a a neighbor, you know, if you have a pet, hug your pet. It's just a very teeny tiny little thing Mm -hmm. to just make yourself feel okay for that moment. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's all really about this moment. I think one of the things that often happens to people is we think we need to fix the entire thing in one second. And that's right. Well, you don't, you don't, you just have to fix it for that moment. Just help yourself for that moment. And that's actually being mindful, right? Yeah. It's not thinking yeah. about tomorrow. It's thinking about what do I need right now? Do I need, you know, do I need to have coffee? Do I need to have chocolate? Whatever makes you happy. You know? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, coffee, chocolate. Yes. Good street tacos. Yeah. All kinds yeah. of stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, just yeah. thinking about what is it that makes me happy, and mm-hmm. and even just thinking about what makes you happy, if those okay. things aren't in in your reach at that moment, also actually changes your whole being. You know, just even yeah. a, just a little bit. Right. And this this is for for listeners that may have a a meditation practice or a, a yoga practice or a mindfulness practice. That's why visualization can actually work even if you're visualizing or picturing something in your mind it doesn't have to be right directly in front of you to affect the same amount of change yeah i love this okay well what's your favorite youtube account for a good laugh or instagram oh my gosh instagram they're all be amazing be amazing um is on instagram i love it that is they have people dancing they have people doing tricks they have just feel good stuff okay i love it it's a great one all right yeah so check that one out be amazing on instagram also at carm viola on instagram for carm's 17 covid related songs that are funny now (laughs) this includes song well you're welcome to do that (laughs) (laughs) you're welcome to do that we have had singers on this show we've had musicians so um, yes but including the Bee Gees so again oh my gosh that's amazing Mm -hmm. this is maybe I'll leave it till the end we'll leave this one till the end (laughs) all right yeah Uh, well so uh, Carm uh, you know as we um, as we wind down here you know what other resources do you recommend to people that are maybe just on the the verge of of reaching out and that's all that they need to do i mean are there certain people or or certain um places they can go they can i mean definitely i would say go to your doctor that's the first point of you know connect with your doctor because your doctor will have resources as to who to go to um, or who to connect you with. There on Instagram, I, I love Instagram. It's my go-to. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there are two, um, oh, a social worker and a psychologist, and one is from Florida and one is from here in Toronto. And they've actually connected and people might be aware of them because they've been on Good Morning America and they've been on, mm-hmm. they've been on various shows. They have a podcast that that's called Anxious Like You. Okay. Anxious Like You. And um, Mikaelin Malouf is one of the, she's the psychologist. She's based out in Florida. And then Nadia, um, Nadia Adesi is the one who lives here. Uh, you, so, they, so they each have a separate Instagram and they have one together. So let me tell you these. Sure. So one is anxious like you 
then it's at evolve and bloom okay and then at micheline.maloof so they have wonderful information they have it's current it's updated and it's actually fun to watch because okay. they do a lot of sort of these tiktok videos and songs to this important cycle ed information right of how you can begin to help yourself okay. and there's tons there's tons like once you kind of link into them then you get linked into all these other sort of professionals out there social worker psychologists wonderful um, who have okay. Yeah. Yes. So that that's a wonderful resource. And then if people are curious about your work, um, not, not they can visit your Instagram, of course, for the 17 songs or heart fuelers. How can people get a hold of you? They can go to my, they can DM me in my Instagram, or they can send me an email. My, my private practice is at, uh, sorry, sorry, it's Delvio, D-E-L, V-I-O at rogers.ca. Okay. So Delvio, D-E-L-V-I-O at rogers.ca. Sorry, Free. it's dot com. It's dot, dot com. com. Okay. Dot com. Right, my, right. Website, my website is www.delvio.ca. Okay. And uh, that's uh, Delvio at rogers.com to, to find out about your yeah. personal practice. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. And then just uh, one more time it, for those listeners that are curious about heart fuelers that we talked about at the outset here, that is on Instagram at heart fuelers, you can nominate people in the Toronto area. Yes. Yes. He's got to be in the Toronto area yes. for right Unfortunately, now. Unfortunately, unless I, you know, I'm happy to have a conversation with you as well of how you can start it, you know, where you are. Definitely, definitely, uh, because yes, yeah, spontaneous joy is is much needed, and you know what? It's always a necessary thing in any time period, but especially right now during a pandemic that's lasted an entire year. So, Carm, what else would you like to to say to the listeners today? I just want all the listeners to know to hang on. We will get through this. I know that it's tough, um, but never feel like you're alone. Never feel like you're alone. There is always someone that you can connect with and just, just seek out that help. You know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. There are lots of people that can help you. Yeah, yeah there are a lot of people that can help you. And even if it may feel like it, at the time. Yeah. And and it and it's hard to take that first step, but you've got this. You can yeah. do it. You have this. You are important. You are worthy. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of living. You are worthy. You and you've got this. We will get through this. Mm -hmm. We have. It's been a year and we're getting through it. We're getting through it. Yes. It's been a year and here we are. <laughs> Yes. And we're still here and we're here and we can get through this. We absolutely can because we've been going through it. We've been adapted. We've been, we are resilient. We, if you think of all the things that, that people have gone through in their lives or historically wars, um, you know, we've gone through it, even though it was so tough in those moments, we've gotten through it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then we'll certainly manage and navigate this because, well, we've done it for a whole year and the end will come. Okay. The end will come. Yeah. Yes. Well, and everyone, please feel free one more time to check out Carm's Instagram and the 17 songs, which include the Bee Gees as I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to look at this as well. And I know I'm going to love it, but uh, that is at Carm Viola on Instagram. So Carm, thank you so much for joining me here today. This has been a real thank, pleasure. Thank you, Tomas. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. Thank you. You're I most welcome, guys. This has been Carm Viola here on Decide to Transform. Again, Instagram at Carm Viola. And laughter and joy is good for you. So I hope that you have a rest of your day filled with laughter and joy. And uh, we'll see you back here again sometime soon. Thanks for Thanks joining us. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody.